Hi, I'm Lynn White. I'm the Education and Volunteer Specialist with Butler Soil and Water Conservation District. And today we're going to look at how organisms make changes to the environment around us. We're going to have a look at a model today to do this. And we'll focus on changes that people have made and changes that one particular animal has made. And we'll look to see if those changes are positive, good things, or if they're negative, bad things. So join us with the model. The model. So on the model, we have this blue stuff. What do you think this blue stuff is supposed to be? Hopefully you guessed it's water because these are creeks that are coming down and they're joining up with our bigger river. And we have lots of big rivers in this area, like the Great Miami River and the Ohio River and the Little Miami River. And lots of smaller creeks will join up with those bigger ones. So we have the water, we have this area, which is a farm. So we have a cow, which I'll stand back up. We have a tractor, and then the farmhouse and barn. Over here, we have a factory with a big parking lot. In this area, we have a neighborhood with lots of houses and they're building more houses. They're doing construction back here. This green area is a golf course. And then finally, this area here, this hill or mountain, well, it's kind of sad. It used to be covered in trees, but they've cut them all down. You might see some of the round spots where trees used to be growing, and now we only have one left. Why would people cut down trees? Can you think of something that we make from trees? If you look around you, you might see a few different things. Did anyone guess about making paper or making pencils, making furniture? There's so many different things that we make from trees. Even our houses have got lots of wood in them. So they're made from trees. When we came in and we cut down all those trees, we made a lot of changes to the world around us. When we cut down the trees, we're taking these trees away from wildlife. Can you think of something that an animal would use a tree for? Think about the basic needs that you learned about in first grade. So some animals could use the tree for shelter. Can you think of an animal that might build its home in a tree? Things like birds and squirrels, they build their nests in trees. So if we take away the trees, we're taking away their place of shelter. The trees can also provide food some animals will eat the bark off the tree. Other animals will eat the leaves on the tree. Can you think of an animal that lives here in Ohio? So not a giraffe or something like that, but an animal that lives in Ohio that might eat the leaves. One of my favorite animals that eats leaves is a caterpillar. And if we take away all of those plants, we're taking away the food for those animals. There's something else that trees provide that animals need and you're using it while you're watching this. It's air. So the trees are providing the oxygen that we need to breathe. And so we're taking away a source of oxygen when we cut down the trees as well. So by cutting down the trees, we've made this hillside look really different. But it's not just that it looks different that's the change. It's the fact that we've taken away shelter, food, and air from the animals as well. Now, when they cut down all those trees, they left all this brown stuff. It used to be covered in the grass and the trees, but once they ripped out those plants, they left that brown stuff there. Do you know what the brown stuff is? It's soil. Now you might have heard of it called dirt, but we're going to use its proper name. We're going to give it its science name and call it soil. So I'm going to sprinkle some pretend soil on our hillside here. I'm actually using cocoa powder. It's a bit messy. So they've left all that bare soil on the hillside. And it doesn't look very good. It looked much better when it was covered in plants, but that's not the biggest problem. If it was to get windy, what do you think would happen to that soil? Do you think it would stay there on the ground? Let's see, let me blow and put some air, some moving air on that soil. Did you see some of it blow away? Well, when the soil blows off of the ground into the air, 
it makes air dirty. Does soil belong in the air? No, it belongs on the ground. When something is in the wrong place and it's making a mess of the world around us, we call that pollution. And pollution is one of the biggest changes that people make to the world around us. And when we cut down all those trees and left that soil bare, we left it so that it could become air pollution by getting blown into the air. So again, pollution is in so something that is in the wrong place that's making a mess of the world around us. Now, what do you think would happen to the soil on the hillside if we were to get precipitation? Precipitation is rain, snow, sleet, or hail. So let me put some precipitation, some rain on there. I'm just going to squeeze some on from my plant spray. Is the soil staying in one place? Maybe you can see it's getting washed into that creek. And if you follow it, where is it going? Yeah, it made it all the way down into our big river. Should rivers look like chocolate milk? No. Should the soil be in that water? No. Is the water clean? No. So that soil, when it washed off of the hillside and into the creek, it became pollution. It's in the wrong place and it's making a mess of the world around it. Now if we look at the soil that's still on that hillside, is that in the right place? Yes, that's where the soil belongs. It belongs on the hillside so that plants can grow. So when it's on the hill, it's in the right place and it's not pollution. When it washes into our rivers and creeks or it blows into our air, it becomes pollution. And you know there's something you can do to stop that from happening. Have you ever planted a flower or a tree or vegetables before? Plants are one of the best things that we can do to help keep that soil where it belongs. So that's a huge change that people make. There's some other changes that people make. Can you think of another type of pollution that people make? So another thing that people do that puts something in the wrong place that's making a mess of the world. Now, I'm guessing a lot of you were thinking about litter, about trash that's been thrown on the ground. Have you ever seen somebody throw trash out of their car window? Have you ever seen trash blowing around in your neighborhood? Have you ever seen it in a parking lot? Trash gets to a lot of different places. And so I'm just going to leave that there. I'm going to add another type of pollution on here. And this one, you might think, is kind of gross. Do you remember our cow? What do you think the pollution is that we're using for the cow? If you're thinking about animal waste, you're right. But cows are not the only animals that go to the waste, um, that leave waste behind. Do any of you have a dog? When people walk their dogs, if they don't pick up, they're leaving waste all over the ground, along the edges of the roads, out in our natural areas like parks, even in parking lots. Do you think that's the right thing to do, to leave that waste on the ground? Do you think that's a good change that we're making to the world around us? Hopefully not. So if you have a dog, what should you do if it goes to the bathroom? Yeah, you should pick it up and throw it away. So we shouldn't leave it on the ground. Well, if I was to make it rain all over this model, where do you think the animal waste and the trash is going to go? Let me make it rain in this area. So you might see that some of that trash is washing into the river. And if we rain up here, some of that animal waste is moving down to the river as well. Do you think that's a good thing for all the fish and the turtles and the frogs and the birds that live around our rivers? Do you think that's a good change for them? No. This is their home. This is their habitat. It's the entire space they're living in. And it's where they're finding their, their water to drink and their food to eat. Would you like if someone came along and did this to your home? No. 
So we have to be really aware of things that we are doing on the land around us because that can have a big impact on our rivers and streams and it can hurt the animals that live there. Fortunately, there's some things that you can do that are good changes. You could pick up trash if you see it in your neighborhood. You could clean up after your dog if it goes to the bathroom. And one of my favorite ones to do is to go out and to help to plant more trees, to provide habitat, to provide food, to provide shelter, and to provide air for the animals around us. So we've looked at changes that people make to the environment around us. Now we're going to look at how one animal in particular can make huge changes. And that animal is this creature. So I know this one's just a puppet, but hopefully you can tell what it's supposed to be. What animal can you think of that's got a big flat tail like this and buck teeth? Yet yeah, it's a beaver. So this is a North American beaver and they're found here in Southwest Ohio. They, now, does anyone know what change that beavers make to the environment? Well, hopefully you're thinking about this, chopping down trees. Now, they don't go to the store to go buy a saw so they can use that to chop down the tree. They have to use their sharp teeth to do it. And you can see the teeth marks all over this piece of tree. And they cut down the trees for a few different reasons. One is for food. So during the summer, the spring and the fall, they'll eat some of the plants that live around their wet area, like cattails and reeds and they'll eat some of the bark and some of the soft wood. When it gets closer to winter time, they start to stockpile wood under water and it's so that they've got food to eat in the winter time. So other than using the trees that they cut down for food, they use it for building something, something they're famous for, and that's building a dam, which is a wall across the water. So they built this dam, and you see the big, deep area of water behind it? This is what they want. They want that big, deep area of water so that they can build their shelter. And the beaver shelter is called a lodge. So this is a beaver lodge, and this is where the family of beavers will live. So we're gonna go back and look at the model again to look to see how beavers change the environment around them. So join us with the model. So when a beaver moves in, it can make huge changes to the landscape around us. Um, beavers cut down trees and they use them to build a dam across the river. And I'm not going to use the trees for it because I wouldn't be very good. I'm not as good at building a dam as a beaver. I'm going to use some clay and put the dam in here. So there's my dam. Now, when we have the dam there, it makes changes to the river. If we have lots of rain that happens up here, that water is going to flow into the river or into the creek. Is that water going past the dam? No, it's getting trapped behind it and we're getting a big pond beginning to develop and it's flooding the cow's field. So the beaver made a change to the river do you think the cow is happy about that change? Probably not. Cows are not the best at swimming, but other animals will love the change. Can you think of an animal that lives in the rivers around here? We get things like fish and frogs and turtles. They will all love this huge pond, this huge area of extra water that has built up since the beaver built the dam. So the changes could be considered bad for animals like the cow, or they could be considered good for animals like the fish. So when we look at changes, you have to not just look how the change affects you, but how it affects the world around us. So remember, not all change is bad. We have to look at it from all sides. Um, but there are some simple things that you can do that can make positive changes that can make good changes to the world around us.